Welcome to our rules comparison. We are going to cover the difference between the USA Gymnastics Level 10 rules for this year and the NCAA rules for this year. They are different, so you should have a USAG Gymnastics Development Code of Points. You should have your NCAA rules summary and you probably also want to have the rules and policies book that talks about equipment specs and other things. So we're going to get started. And some of this is very basic, but we thought it was important to review so that if you have newer coaches, assistant coaches, people who maybe were athletes, but now they're a coach to remind you of what needs to be in their routines. So your start value has to have eight skills of value in it. We have to have three A's, three B's, and two C's minimum. Of course, you can have higher level skills, and they can replace lower valued skills. So we want to make sure that you can count up the value parts that are there and be sure that no one's missing. Sometimes what happens is a start value could be a 9-9, and the athlete was on balance beam and she was missing an A value part, which maybe you thought the mount was an A and it was not. So to double check those things as you're getting ready for the season, the A value parts are worth one tenth, the Bs are worth three, and the Cs are worth five. Linda, I'd like to provide an example on floor. For the past two years, there have been several floor routines across the country that were missing a B. And that resulted in a start value of 9.7. Typically, these were the routines that had only two passes. I'm going to give an example. In this routine, the first pass was a round off blick black double back with a full twist, a full turn, a switch side leap to popa, and then a front salto round off blick black double back. So it's a very nice routine. However, it is missing a B. The gymnast has five A value parts, no Bs, two Cs, one D, and one E. Now the higher level value parts, as you said, can count for the lower level value parts, but not the reverse. So the D and the E can count for two of the three Bs that she needs, but she's still missing a B value part. Therefore, she had a 9-7. I'd suggest that coaches double check all the routines on floor, particularly those with two passes, and make sure that they have at least eight value parts, including a minimum of five value parts that will count for the B and C requirements. Missing value parts are deducted from the start value, and you know your start value begins at 9-4, and then we deduct any missing value parts from there and any special requirements, which are each worth two tenths from the start value. And then we add back in the bonus that was given and awarded that day. We'll talk about bonus that maybe potentially was in the routine, but she fell on something. If she falls on an element, it could be no value part and of course no bonus if she fell because maybe she didn't touch the bar or the beam at all so that was a zero or it may be a value part that she did land on top of the beam and then fell or touched the bar and then fell she would get a value part for that but no bonus so we're going to start at our nine four we're going to look to see anything missing, deduct that, and then add back in the bonus that she has. NCAA has composition deductions that are not shown in the start value. You can see most of them on the UTL card, the up to the level card, but there are still a couple things you'd want to be aware of that are not included in there, and you would have the possibility to inquire on some of those. Deductions for execution, dynamics, artistry, and composition are all deducted from the start value to arrive at the final score. So if your start value is 10-0 and our deductions are total of 4 tenths, this final score is a 9-6. We want to talk about what happens if there's an equipment failure. In the past, the gymnast had the option of repeating the entire routine or starting from the point of interruption. Well, the new rule is that if there's an equipment failure, 
and it results in a fall. She is not deducted for the fall and she's allowed to resume the routine from the point of interruption. So it could be that she fell on her dismount because the beam slipped or something like that. And then she is allowed to get back up and do her dismount sequence again. And here is the example of the beam dropping when she goes to dismount. So we do not take the fall deduction. We let her get back up and resume her dismount and not have deductions on the first attempt. So we're gonna talk about vaulting. There were a few things that we clarified in our code on vault. We have a change in deduction for prescribed LA turn begun too early. So this is mainly on those twisting vaults that don't salto, but it's up to five now, and it used to be up to three. So this would be on the table, not in the air, because they're allowed to turn whenever in the air they want to. But if they're turning on the table, we can have a deduction of up to five. I don't believe that's going to happen at college. There might be a minor, minor deduction, but certainly not five tenths. Also, if they are on the table and they take a step with their hands, it's a flat one tenth. If they hop with both hands, it's a flat three. And again, this probably isn't going to happen, but just in case you know that that is in our code. Other things on vaulting. These are reminders. This is not new. It's been there for a long time. We want to see the gymnast maintain a nice straight shape as she's coming down or open the shape of a Tucker Pike position to extension before landing. We have up to three. Then we also have body posture on landing, and that is when she lands on the ground, what shape is she in? And that would be up to two. So the little graphics over there show you the chest position being upright, stretching before landing. And then the bottom graphic shows you no opening, no stretch before landing and landing all bent over. So the total that could be deducted would be five tenths if all of that happened. Linda, I just wanted to let the coaches know that we are continuing to work with our judges on the education regarding safe landings based on what we learned from Dr. Dave Tilley last year. And as you'll see in the diagram from the USAG code of points, the chest position being slightly forward is an acceptable technique for no deduction. We also have a deduction at the top there of under rotation of salto vaults, and it's a flat one. And we take that when she lands and has to step towards the table. She landed short. So not only did she probably have some body posture on her landing or failure to open, she had to step towards the table. So we take the one-tenth for that and also the one-tenth for the step. At the bottom, we have landing with feet apart, and this is not a new deduction either. If they land with their feet hip width apart or closer, and they never join their heels, we take 05. If they land with their feet wider than hip width apart, we have a flat one that we apply. So they can land with their feet apart, but they need to slide their heels together to not get a deduction. All right, moving on to bars. This is to clarify that when we do D and E level skills, those are eligible for the D bonus or the E bonus. But if the first time she does a D skill and she gets value part, meaning she touched the bar, but she fell, she doesn't get the bonus. So she does it to Kachev, she touches the bar and falls, she gets the value part. Remember, they have to have eight counting skills. We would count it as one of her releases. So it would count for everything except she wouldn't get the bonus. But if she then gets back up and repeats that skill of Tkachev, she remounts the bar, performs a Tkachev, connects it with an overshoot, uh, then she would get the bonus the second time because we didn't get it the first time. She'd get that D plus she'd get the connection for the two skills. Just so you know that she would get credit the second time for that D bonus. Another clarification, um, hop grip changes on bars. If she does a hop to a handstand, cast hop, whatever, the hop has to be 
done on the ascending phase, on the way up, in order to count it as a release. If she does a hop with a half turn, like a cast handstand hop with a half turn, they have to complete the hop before the turn. And if she wants to count it as a release skill, the hop has to be on the way up. Pack saltos. We see a lot of pack saltos now, and a lot of times they're in combination with other high level skills. So these are the technique points that we're looking for in a pack salto. They should be showing us their hips at the level of the high bar at the peak of their salto. We have up to two for amplitude for release skills. So up to two for the height of the pack salto. Also, we're looking for them to finish in a definite clear front support position on the low bar. So shoulders over hands, hips above shoulders, and then do whatever she does out of it. And, you know, to look at it, you would want to say, okay, she caught that and she could still do a clear hip out of it or something. If her shoulders are way behind the bar, she's not going to be able to do anything but probably kip. And so she would have a deduction for not finishing in that clear support position. So we do have some new D elements that I'm going to put up. And these were skills that were in the three, six, seven group, the toe-ons, the clear hips, and the stalders with turns. And we changed the value to all the half turning ones that go to a different grip and they went to D. Now the stalder already is a D, for college, but the others were not. So something new in composition is applying the deduction for more than one squat on. We've always had that deduction. If they do more than one squat on or stoop on or toe circle around, it's a flat one tenth deduction. But now the new rule is if the gymnast falls, a gymnast may resume the routine with a glide kip squat on or jump to front support and then squat on without getting that one-tenth deduction for more than one squat on. The thing you want to remember is that judging does begin with an element she does. So she falls, she chalks up, she goes back to the front side of the bar, and she does glide kip cast squat on. Well, we're going to judge the glide kip and the cast for execution. So if she's going to do that, make sure she does it well so we don't have more deductions. So now we'll go to beam and we have a few things on beam we want to be aware of. There are new beam elements. We're going to show you the new beam elements and a little history. When we sat a couple years ago to develop this code of points, we looked at our national meets to figure out uh, which events were scoring 10-0 plus one because we have that plus one for the extra 10th a bonus that they could achieve if they do acro E's on beam and floor, and of course, any E on bars. So they had to have six tenths in bonus in order to get that with an E. So we looked through the code, and as it turned out, after our national meets, beam was the event that had the fewest opportunities to get that extra tenth for E. So we reevaluated many elements and raised them. And that's why we have more E's. A lot of them are mounts. Some of them also went from C to D.
beam execution. This is not new. We have had this for several years. And at the beginning, uh, we did have a lot of deductions because the girls were waiting, waiting, waiting too long before they'd start their series or their leap series or their dismount anytime they stand and pause. So the rule is just as a review, if they pause for two seconds before they initiate a skill, it's a flat one tenth. If it's more than two second pause, like we could get to three, 1,001, 1,002, 1,000, more than two is a flat two tenths. So our definition is you begin counting when the gymnast is stationary or is readjusting arms, feet, or body prior to initiating an element or series. We do have some video to show you about those concentration pauses. And the thing is, is it's obvious when they're setting up for a skill, but we do want to see their rhythm continue throughout the routine. We did take out a couple skills out of the code, all knee turns on beam. I don't think I've seen one for years and years and years. Also, all full turns holding their leg at horizontal or 45 above. So they can do a turn uh, with holding their leg up at vertical, and that's still fine, or not hold their leg. Couple new things on balance beam. The D skill of a turn holding the leg with a 180 split throughout. Now, what has changed is that anytime they hold their leg up and do the turn, that position of the flexibility should be at a 180 split. They will still get credit for the turn, like the D turn of one and a half turn holding the leg. Uh, if it's not quite at a 180 split, we can take a deduction if it's a little bit out to the side. So we're expecting that flexibility. Here's a picture of the different turns with the leg extended. So they try, maybe she tries the turn with her leg horizontal, which is a C, but it doesn't ever stay there. Then we would give it the B turn, which would be 45 degrees instead of the C. Uh, the one and a half turn, leg horizontal. Once it arrives, it has to stay there. Uh, and that is the D. And then the three graphs on the bottom are the turns holding the leg, holding leg upward in 180 split position. This is a question that came up a lot last year. So we're going to cover it here and just define what we're looking for in these two skills. In the first picture of the C turn, the split jump with the half turn is supposed to show us that front to back split in the air with the front knee up and the back knee under. That's what position we need to see their legs in. That's a C. In order to get the D, they have to show us the straddle position. It could be the pike straddle, like the girl in the graphic there under the D, or it could be a split center split straddle. Both knees need to be up and the toes pointed with the knees up facing the ceiling. So that is one way that we can differentiate. If they cheat the jumps, then it might just be a quarter, not a half turn. So that C jump could turn into a B and the D could be a C. We'll show you the video and then you can determine what you think those were, Cs or Ds. Split jump with half turn. This is the C. We'll see her in slow. And we can look for her leg positions. So she's got her front knee up and her back knee under. So that is a C skill. And there she is. So you see the position of her, her front knee and her back knee. And we're not really looking at if she cheated the turn or not, we're looking at the positions. So here is the D skill. Okay, so obviously the first straddle jump is there, but now this one, she's got both knees turned up 
She's facing sideward, and that's the D. Let's see it again. And here's her position of her side split. And it's harder to pinpoint these with both knees up than when she does a pike straddle. That's a lot easier to recognize. I love this picture. So here you have the split position, and there you have the straddle position. And now here's a kind of UFO that you can't really tell. Watch it again. Hard to tell. It's a kind of a in-betweener. Then you put the ball in the judge's court and they have to use their judgment to determine, was that a split or was it a straddle? It kind of looked more like a split. We did clarify some skill values and what we're looking for also in things like the cat leap. Many gymnasts use a cat leap into another leap jump or acro skill for bonus. And the cat leap is an A. And the definition of a cat leap in our technique page in the back of the code is always, was always with the knees turned out. So we have now clarified it to say they could have bent legs and their knees could be parallel. But the problem with these is not as much if the knees are out or forward, it's the amplitude that is lacking on the cat leap position. It's only an A skill, but it has a potential for one to three tenths in execution errors. So we're looking for both thighs to be horizontal in the air and the transition of the legs should be up in the air at the same time with good amplitude. That one was very minor. You know, you could lose up to a good two tenths on a cat leap. This was a good one. She actually showed us her legs up in the air. And we have the beat jump, the same thing. We want to see amplitude. We want to see them up in the air because they use this skill to connect with something harder. We're looking for that great amplitude high up off of the beam with stretched legs and torso nice in position. So now we have some other skills to show you that were skills ending in a scale. While the video goes, you're going to want to think of what is required. Two things. When they do an aerial to a scale, first, the scale needs to be at horizontal and held for two seconds. That's the second thing. So if it's not to horizontal, then it just retains the core value of the aerial, a D, but to get the E, they have to get it at horizontal and hold it for two seconds. So 1001, 1002. And so it may start a little lower and then lift, that's okay. But once it lifts, it has to stay there. We have directional deductions that this is a compositional deduction, a flat 05, if they're non-choreographed parts, those are the little steps and kicks and poses and things, you must show forward, sideward, and backward. So it can't be just turning your head to the side, you must turn your torso, your body to the side and move. So you can't just do one pose, it has to, you have to get sideward, do something sideward and then move on. So it's a flat 05. Would these count as sideward movement? No, because she's just turning her head and maybe a little bit of shoulder. Here's a better picture of things that are truly sidewards. And so now she had to move sideward to get to this pose and then move out of it. So then she would show us her sideward movement. On balance beam, it would be how they kind of scooch backwards and tap their foot at the end of the beam. That's not choreography and things like that. And of course it would have to be more than one thing.
Well, we're going to go to floor exercise. First of all, we have a short video about tumbling execution because questions have come up. Are there footwork deductions on tumbling? And the answer is yes. So we'll see some variants of flex feet and tumbling as well as tumbling that doesn't have flex feet. We also have a dance technique of some skills that you would see all the time in a meet and leaps and turns. And typically we see the switch side into the popa and the switch side is usually overturned and the popa is usually underturned. So therefore, there are either deductions or no bonus given. So just to review with what our rules actually are, if they do the switch side and they overturn it, and then we have to mark where their feet land and then see where the popa finishes. If it is within the last quarter of the turn, we can give it credit with a deduction. Another issue is the switch side, if the front leg doesn't reach 45, we can take a deduction for precision. Also, there is an example here of the first switch side that stags the switch. So therefore it would not be a C. It would... Some other things that you're gonna to wanna to be aware of on floor, uh, we have relaxed incorrect footwork on non-value parts throughout the routine. This is for floor and beam as well. It's up to three tenths. Our footwork deductions used to be up to two and now it's up to three. So what we're talking about is all the steps and the poses and the running into the leaps and those situations where they're not on the balls of their feet. On balance beam, it's the same thing. Their steps should all be on the balls of their feet unless it's a specific choreographed flat position. So we have up to three and the judges will write a little F on their paper every time they see a uh, poor footwork. And it could be flat feet, it could be sickled feet, especially running into their leap pass is where it's real noticeable. Or the just little standing dance or getting up off the floor. Lots of time the foot is sickled when they're getting up. So there's some examples of that. And we have another deduction that was raised and that was the relax incorrect leg or body position, body posture, flexibility in non-value parts throughout the exercise. And it used to be up to two and now it's up to three. So that tells us that there's more emphasis being placed on those parts of the routine that aren't A's, B's, C's, or D's. They're the in between the transitions, the moving in and out of the corners, the different types of movements they're using should be showing us correct body position and posture and flexibility in those non-value parts up to three. So also on floor, we have a couple things that you need to be aware of. One of them is the music and missing synchronization of movement and music at the end of the exercise is a flat one tenth. The routine has to end with the music. Um, younger children have a little more trouble with this than college girls, but there still are times that they're not ending and matching their music. Also, we have a deduction that is raised to up to three tenths for poor relationship with the music and movement throughout the exercise. We do also have a new deduction, and this one um, might be tough for those college girls that like to finish and celebrate right away. Failure to hold the ending pose for one second is a flat 05 deduction 
and you can fix this by practicing it. And I think it's just something that the girls need to get used to that it is okay, you're done, but you need to hold it kind of, you know, make the statement that the routine is done. And then we want to talk about artistry just a little bit. Up to three tenths is the category of artistry. There are three parts to artistry. One is the choreography, another is the personal style, and the third one is expression and focus. The first category of choreography, it says lack of variety in choreography, poses, phrases, connections is up to one. This could be considered, um, okay, she's shown me one movement and then she does it three more times. That's like, well, give us a little more variety. We've seen you could do that once, show us something different. Also, we have unnecessary adjustments and steps without choreography. And picture girls walking backwards into the corner more than one time. Then we have personal style. Personal style, does her music on floor fit what she is capable of doing? One thing I like to refer to is, okay, why would you have an athlete do river dance type music, Irish dancing, when she has trouble pointing her feet? You want to find a style that fits the girl. Younger children have trouble because they want to always copy someone else's style and it really might not be for them. College, I don't think, has that problem. But we also have up to one for expression and focus. And that is so important because we really want them to tell a story in their floor routine. They, we want them to entertain the audience. We want them to be bigger than just the 40 by 40 floor. Express to everybody that is there watching that day. Not look at the floor, keep their eye focus down, they should use their eyes as much as possible. That kind of brings us to the end of this part, which is where the USAG rules fit into the college rules. And then Lois is going to talk about what the other college rules are. And hopefully if you have questions, please let us know. And thank you for your time. Hello, I'm Lois Colburn. I'm going to talk about the collegiate gymnastic rules and indicate which ones are different from the USAG program, which I may call age group or developmental program, DP. Okay, these are based on the women's gymnastics rules modification document. You just received a corrected one last week. So make sure that what you're using says October 15th and you received a new NCAA rules news from Crystal. It's also dated October 15th. The rules news, if she has questions, come out on the first of the month and the 15th. Now, this went out with the first document, and it's a clarification that NCAA has now decided to move the forms out of the modifications. They will be on the NCAA site when they're completed, they usually have been in the back of the modifications. Different groups are working on editing and correcting these. Cookie and I are working with the jazz chairs on the meat referee checklist, which used to be Appendix Roman numeral 7. So you'll need to go to a separate site for that information. Uh, the other thing you should be aware of is that the judges get all their NCAA materials off of newg.org. You have access to this if you are looking for the modifications or the rules news, or the compensation document, it's open to the public. And there is an NCAA section of materials there, which is where you would go. Also on that site, you'll find a lot of study materials we use for the judges, practice judging films, uh, the sample score sheets, application forms for new judges, et cetera. So newgj.org is an excellent site if you're looking for additional information or what information the judges receive. 
the USAG level 10 rules and procedures come from the optional code of points that, that are used by the NCAA colleges. These are things that you need to go to the code of points in order to get the information. So they're pretty much all under general. Working procedures for the judging panel, determining the average score, difficulty values. And what I mean by that is what A's, B's, and C's are worth and how many you need. Recognition of value parts, like how to recognize what is correct for a value part. The execution technique, amplitude, posture, and artistry, which Linda went over before. And then most element values, exceptions are in the modifications. Also a lot of the bonus combinations. There are exceptions for college, additions for college but most of them are the same as for age group. The things that are different for the college program, all of the vault values are different. And I'm calling this vault contact with the table deductions, but they are vaulting deductions that apply to unusual circumstances, but those are all different from the age group program or the DP program. On the other events, the start value, it's a 9.4 for college, it's 9.5 for DP. Special requirements are two tenths for college, five tenths for DP. Many of the compositional deductions are different for college. Some are based on age group or DP deductions. There are some connection values for bonus that are different for college or their additions for the college program. And up to the level is totally different. The deduction and requirements are both very different. So these are changes to the NCAA rules for this next season. You should have just received a summary of all of the age group changes and you received the modification changes. So I'm not going to go into much detail on any of these, but you might note that 4.36 uh, was reduced from a 10 to a 995. So it was no longer the same with the same as the same vault in Pike. These are additions to the DP chart that got put on the college chart as well. And on the vault page of values, all of these are in bold. So you can note which ones there are changes. The deletions, two of the vaults that were in the old college vault table have been deleted because there is something similar to them already on the table. And then there are two new li listings. So Sukahara quarter on quarter off front tuck one and a half a 10 and Sukahara double back tuck. Okay, the other vaulting addition is that lines have to be added in a funnel shape to the vault landing mat as a visual guide for officials regarding the current direction deduction. NCAA rule changes on bars. There are a number of element changes, and these are in your modifications. If you're wondering why there's an edit on the Stalder, it's because it used to say in the modification, Stalder forward to a full turn and Stalder back to a full turn. Well, the age group program added the Stalder back, made it an E, therefore, it doesn't need to be in the modifications. And the college committee made these changes to provide more variety in the dismounts. And the USAG increased the value of five other elements. They are clear hip circles, back stalder, pike sole circle, each with a half turn to a reverse L or mixed L grip. They all went from C to D. 6.40 that's highlighted there was already a D in the college program. And then they added clear hip circle and pike sole circle to handstand with a full turn and handstand went from D to E. I have already mentioned 6404, 6504, which is stalled or backward to handstand with a full turn in the handstand phase was an E already. Your special requirements for college, and this is the same as they were last year, but just as a review, two bar changes. Two flight elements, minimum of two different Cs or D and a B. The dismount is excluded. One element with an LA turn, longitudinal access turn, minimum C, excludes the mount and the dismount, and a C dismount. Now, college has a special rule that if a C dismount is immediately preceded by the same two A or B elements, there's a deduction of 0.1 from start value, not part two. 
up to the level. This is not a change. It's a flat 0.1 deduction. The gymnast must have a single bar D release or an E release or two D releases or two E elements excluding the dismounts. And they must have a minimum of a D dismount or a C dismount with connective value. Composition is all the same as it was last year. We use the DP bonus plus any E release element or a single bar D release element receives an additional one-tenth difficulty bonus. Balance beam, new difficulty values for college. The double full dismount went from a C to a D. A switch side leap with a quarter turn went from a D to an E. And a chojete with a quarter turn went from a D to an E. These are all in the new version of the modifications. So the rationale was that it provides an option for more difficult leaps and additional difficulty in the dismounts. Now, the new one is the special requirement. You now are required to have a minimum of a C dismount on balance beam. And the rationale for that was to increase the level of difficulty on beam to come closer to the dismount requirements on bars and floor. Some C options are listed below. You can take a screenshot of this if you want that list. There are also many D and E value dismounts to choose from as well. So new USAG rules that apply to college. The balance beam connective value bonus, the connection of two acro flight elements, one is C salto, can now include the mount. Are there a number of new mounts with higher values in the age group program, which apply to college. So they can now be used for this bonus combination. Element value changes. I'm not going to go through these because there are a lot of them. They're all on that document about level 10 changes. You can take screenshots as we go along here if you wish to. Just a note that the two foot takeoff front salto tucked was an E for college already. It's now gone to an E for age group. The special requirements for balance beam, the ACRO series has to be either two flight elements, one a minimum C with a, without hand support and the mount is okay, or a non-flight, so group seven walkovers cartwheels plus an E ACRO. We more commonly see the first one, but it should be noted that these may not be connected to the dismount. They must stop on the beam. Then dance, dance, or dance acro, minimum of two elements. The dance element must be a C or higher, and the series may not be connected to the dismount. Uh, the leap or jump with 180 degree split, it may be part of the dance, dance series or the dance acro series. And the full turn from group three, those are all the same as they have been. The difference, as I said, is the minimum of a C dismount. It used to say B dismount preceded and directly connected to a D acro. For example, an arrow cartwheel to a full twist dismount will not fulfill the new special requirement. The up to the level rules, one-tenth flat deduction for college. This did not change. If the flight series doesn't have connective value, then an additional D or E acro element, including mounts and dismounts, or an E dance element, including mounts, is required. That was edited in the modifications, but it says the same thing that we were doing last year. The D or E acro element directly connected to the dismount cannot fulfill up to the level. And if an acro series is completed but not awarded connected value due to a fall, the up to the level deduction will not be applied. Okay, composition the same as they were last year. Composition for college says failure to show movement choreography in different directions, forward, backward, and sideward, all of them. Connective value, these are the college exceptions. First one, the text was removed from the modifications. No, you don't get CV if a B dismount, so you must have at least a C. Uh, there's no CV for a two-flight acro series of a B and a C. That's different from age group, and it makes a difference because of the next rule. A layout back salto and an aerial walkover receive D bonus, but are considered Cs for connective value when they are in a back handspring series only. And then the three-flight acro series, including the dismount connections, with at least one C gets a tenth extra bonus. B or higher acro 
plus C or higher dismount gets a one-tenth CV, and C or higher dance plus C or higher dismount gets a one-tenth CV. Okay, these are the NCAA rule changes for floor exercise. The first thing in the modifications, it says that there's a change in definition of an acro pass. It's number 5.1 on the modifications. One or more acro elements, one element must be a salto valued at a C or higher. This impacts the special requirements. This would allow an athlete to perform one skill, C or above, and have it meet the requirement of an acro pass. Examples, a single element of C or higher or two or more elements, including C or higher for special requirements. Up to the level, they've eliminated the one acro series, used to have three acro flight elements with a C salto or better was eliminated because of the new definition of an acro pass. And in bonus, happily for the judges, they've eliminated the confusing gym acro gym bonus principle. And the special requirements are changed. One acro pass with two indirectly connected saltos, same or different, or two directly connected saltos. They must be in an acro pass as defined on the previous slide. Aerials are not considered saltos. So a B plus B double salto pass would not meet this requirement. This one's important. So the front layout to a front layout half, BB, would not get the two salto requirement of special requirements. They would still get bonus connection. Three different saltos with the exercise that's the way it's been in the past, but one of those saltos could be a single acro. The last salto, isolator and connection, must be a minimum C and must be an acro pass. And the dance passage is the same as age group and it has not changed for college. The up to the level, they've eliminated the one acro series, three acro flight elements with C salt or better. So these are the current college floor up to the level requirements. One E valued element, acro or dance, or two different D elements, one of which must be an acro. An acro dismount with a minimum C salto in bonus combination or a D minimum salto. The two pass routine, a minimum D element and one pass. Now that pass could be a single element. And a minimum D element or two tenths connected value in the other pass, and they may be in any order. And a one acro pass routine would not meet the up to the level requirement. So here's an example that was created by one of the coaches. If a routine had a standing back tuck at the beginning, that's one of the three different saltos, has a switch side half and popa, that's the dance series, and it's got two tenths connection bonus. The front handspring and front double full punch front is the double salto pass and the other two different saltos, and it is the last salto. And then the switch leap tojete full gets one tenth bonus. You deduct one tenth, the one acro pass routine would not meet the up to the level requirement. Specific composition deductions are the same as they were last season for the colleges. These are USAG rules that apply to college. And this whole group right here are execution things that Linda mentioned. But the key one is the last deduction, failure to hold the ending pose for one second. I had a choral director a long time ago who said, when there's a choral piece and you're singing, you need to stop and freeze at the end of the composition so that you framed the musical piece in silence. And that's now what the gymnasts need to do on floor. They need to hold the final pose so that the audience gets a chance to enjoy whatever they've just done. They must hold it and it's an 05 deduction. And our looking back at films, when we were working on this this summer, there are a lot of floor routines that don't hold the final pose. The artistry section has been clarified to indicate that unnecessary adjustments or steps without choreography can receive a deduction under artistry. So those are the gymnasts backs into the corner or tries to find out where the end of the balance beam is. 
their extra adjustments or steps without choreography. And the deduction is for the whole routine. It's not every time they do that. Okay, connected value, USAG rules that are applied to college. So indirect acro connections of two or more saltos or aerials, acro elements without hand support. So the new one is B plus C gets one tenth. C plus C was changed for age group to two tenths, but it was already in the college rules. AAD was changed to two tenths. AE was changed to two tenths. As I said, these are all indirect. And then BDE changed to two tenths or CDE or more difficult was changed to two tenths. So there's a lot of different new bonus. Elements that are different from level 10, the first two were in last year's rules, the front pike salt is an A, the ring jump or staggering jump with the full, full turn is a D, and the one that was added this year is 1305, switch side half is a D. Those are what we're going to be working with this season. If you have questions, my email address is listed below. For most of you probably know I'm in charge of the assigning system for the colleges. So I'll even answer questions to do with that. So thank you and good luck.